This is AM630, KTKK. Well, I'm Steve Reinhardt, filling in for Mark tonight. KTAC is here to tell you everything you never knew you wanted to know, from the fascinating and obscure to the fresh and far-reaching in your car, at work, at home. You can find it here. Welcome to KTAC, the late drive slot. I host the show on Saturdays at 1 o'clock about Utah historical, political, cultural, and religious topics. I'll talk about that later. I need to begin tonight's show by telling you a little about the inner workings of talk radio. On talk radio, no matter what the subject being discussed, political, economic, religious, you always end up with callers wanting to talk about conspiracy theories. We get callers who are just trying to advocate the most outrageous theories. We get so many of these calls here at the station. There are a lot of people who are intelligent, who are rational people, who seem to believe what that seems like irrational. They harbor irrational beliefs. We have a number of people who call the station that believe Bush was responsible for Katrina, and that he blew up the levees in Katrina, that somehow the Bush administration was responsible for 9-11. There's people who have certain beliefs about the JFK assassination, Abraham Lincoln, Illuminati, UFOs, the Apollo moon landings being faked, the AIDS virus. These conspirators have videos and evidence they demand we examine. We've heard about ESP, telekinesis, telepathy, dowsing, Wiccanism, numerology, Scientology, Rosicrucianism, Bigfoot, Kabbalah, astrology. The phone lines are open for callers. Salt Lake City, 254-5855. Ogden, 670-5855. And Provo, 470-5855. Now, we have a very distinguished guest with us here on the air. He's on, right? Yes, yes. A second. It's Dr. James Randi on the phones with us, who is the founder of the James Randi Educational Foundation, which offers a $1 million reward to anybody who can prove that they have any sort of extra sensory abilities. Dr. Randi, are you there with us tonight? Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry for the technical problems we had earlier. Thank you for joining us. We're very honored to have you on the program. I prefer not to be referred to as Dr. Randi, please. It's only an honorary degree. I'm very proud of it, but... Uh, I really shouldn't accept that title. I apologize. Well, I have all sorts of interesting information here with me about your foundation and about some of the things that you've done. We have a number of questions for you from a couple of members here at the staff and from some people that know that you are going to be on. First, perhaps you can describe your educational foundation. Tell me what, why you were inspired to create it and what purposes it serves. Well, the point is that there are lots of people out there making all kinds of uh, strange claims, paranormal, occult, the supernatural claims. They say they've got certain powers or that they've seen uh, certain events take place. They say they're witnesses to uh, supernatural events. Okay, um, I can accept that they believe this, but the point is, can they prove it? And I've uh, managed to, to get together a million dollars uh, that is a prize. It's not a, an, an award or a bet or anything like that. It's a prize that we will award to any person who can provide evidence that these things really exist. Now, I'm not saying, and we have never said, they don't exist. All we do is we say, if you claim they do exist, then win the million dollars. So we're not saying that, you, uh, that we have to prove they don't exist because we don't say that they don't exist. If you say they do, then you establish that they do, and you win the million dollars. Now, the purpose of the James Randi Educational Foundation, basically, is to serve as an information source for students, for uh, the merely curious, uh, for the media, certainly, and we're consulted by them all the time. And we have a very vast library, electronic and uh, actual books, uh, at our foundation in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, that is available to any, anybody who wants to come by or wants to call in or wants to... Uh, uh, contact us by phone or fax or telepathy or any means they want, and we will share that information with them. And a lot of that information is on your website, which is www.randy.org, R-A-N-D-I.org. Now, how long have you been offering this million-dollar prize? You've been well, for it, a while. it started out as a, as a thousand-dollar prize uh, back in, I think, something like 1968, when I was confronted on a radio program out of New York City by a parapsychologist who said, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Well, $1,000 back in 1968 was a lot more money than it is right now, but uh, it was just about everything that I had in the bank, everything that I'd saved over the years, and I did offer the, the money. Now, I do admit that in the three or four years following that, 
Occasionally it dipped down below a thousand dollars, but since nobody was taking it anyway, I wasn't too worried about that. Then it became ten thousand dollars. On one occasion, it became a hundred thousand dollars for a special uh, a television program I did for Lexington Broadcasting back in 1989, I believe it was. And uh, then a gentleman came along and uh, laid a million dollars into a special account for us with Goldman Sachs, the investment house, and it makes us interest. We use part of that interest uh, uh, that is accumulated every year to help run the foundation, and the prize is the, the money itself is in a prize account of the James Randi Educational Foundation. It can't be used for any purpose other than to award to the person or persons who win the prize by providing uh, sufficient evidence for any paranormal, occult, or supernatural event or power. The way we found out about your organization is we actually had a caller call in and tell us that you were a fraud and that no matter if it was proven or not, you would never award the money. We looked at your website, and obviously that's not true. And we, we see that people talk about your organization all over the Internet. These people seem so convinced, many of them, that they have extra sensory abilities that they, they refuse to acknowledge the legitimacy of your organization. And can, can you tell me, is there a mentality, these people who apply for your program, we want to talk about them here in a minute, do they all share a certain mentality or, or personality characteristic that makes them believe that these types of things are true when they're, when they're not and they can't prove them? Well, in most cases, they're not very well educated. They don't understand what science is all about. They seem to think that uh, science is just a theory in itself and that it, uh, it comes up with answers that uh, are not necessarily true. Now, that is true about science, because science n doesn't discover facts. Science discovered statements about the universe that they can formulate, E equals MC squared, S equals UT plus half AT squared, whatever, uh, formulas and, and statements about the universe that appear to cover certain limited phenomena and are subject to correction at all times. And people say, aha! You mean scientists doesn't really know anything. And that's absolutely true. Science only prepares statements that seem to express the reality of the universe and is constantly subject to revision and or correction or downright denial. Now, the religion and other claims like this are not of this nature. Dr. Randy, we have to take a quick commercial break. Do you mind staying with us? Sure. And we'll be right back with Carl Drew on my screen. <laughs> Mark Maxon, he's on K Talk. AM 630 KTKK. Four years ago, Noemi's husband found work in America. To make ends meet, Noemi needed to find work. Basically, I needed to get a better English, to increase my skills, to find better experience. That's when she found Desert Industries. So they told me how to get the license. Every time you donate goods to Desert Industries, you give people like Noemi a chance to learn valuable job and life skills. Desert Industries was really wonderful. Desert Industries, getting the most out of what you've given. Some doors are good, some are better. The best stores you can get for quality, price, and value are found at Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Prices Guaranteed Doors. For 22 years, Prices Doors has been an industry leader in customer satisfaction. Right now, it's the scratch and dent sale on single and double wide doors. Hurry in for the best selection. Overhead Doors have more options, more styles, more colors, more features, all at the lowest prices. You'll get the best for less right now. Check the website at PricesDoors.com or call 975-7575, 975-7575, serving the Wasatch Front. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Don't miss the once a year scratch and dent sale. Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Prices Guaranteed Doors. Visit the website or call 975-7575. The prices are the best. Call now and you will be happy and save money. Change. Real change. I'm back on He's on K Talk. I'm back. I'm Steve Reinhardt. I'm with you tonight, filling in for Mark Maxon. The phone numbers are 254-5855 in Salt Lake City and Ogden, 670-5855, and in Provo, 470-5855. We've got James Randi of the James Randi Educational Foundation here with us. And I apologize that I called you doctor again just before we took that commercial break. <laughs> i got to remember not to do that. But we have the caller here, Drew, who'd like to make a comment about some of these spirits. Let's see. Let's go to Drew now. 
Drew, are you with us? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yes. Drew from Salt Lake City. We've got James Randy here on the phone. Did you have a question for uh, James? Uh, yeah, I had. You know, uh, there's about uh, 10 million people in the world that believe Joseph Smith had uh, two angels come down and visit him, and that also gave him some gold plates that he used to form the Mormon religion. Would you say that all of this, that he is a fraud and that none of this happened? Well, James talks about religion and its place in the world on your website. How do you, how does the Educational Foundation feel about religion, James? Well, we well, don't have to have There's no reason that, that, that we should, because religion doesn't offer evidence. It only offers anecdotal uh, material. Uh, somebody said this, somebody said that, somebody uh, mentioned something else, somebody wrote a history of this. It may be true. We can't say whether it's true or not. All we say is we're looking for evidence, not just anecdotal stories. And uh, certainly uh, with Joseph Smith, he's been dead for a long, long time, as you may know. And those stories uh, are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they are stories. Now, I'm willing to be shown otherwise, but we can't have any proof of religious claims. Well, what would you say about the 10 million people who believe that he is not a fraud? And, and and that, would you say that they have some kind of mental illness, that they've been brainwashed? Oh, no, not at all. Because more people, many more millions of people than, than that today still believe that the Earth is flat. Now, these are not people in what we call cel as civilized parts of the world, but they do right. believe that their world is flat, and I believe that it is not. That doesn't mean that well, they do you or that they're here, here in, The people here in this country... Who, uh, who believe in Joseph Smith, they are enlightened scientifically, yet they still believe in, in these stories. So how would you, how would you explain, how would you explain that? To, I, I, I don't explain it. I don't explain it at all. If you want to believe that, fine. That's what the United States of America is all about. You're free to believe that God is a cabbage, lives in your garden, glows at night, and speaks French. As long as you don't just set out to try to prove it, I think you'd be in, in big trouble if you tried to prove that. Now, there is no proof to these religious claims. There's just a lot of people who believe it. And that's fine. I don't have any objection to that. The difference is... Now, hey, can I ask you a question? There are... I don't believe in the, the psychics that uh, charge people money to tell your fortunes and things. But millions of people do. There are psychics that work for police departments across uh, this country that have had... Uh, startling uh, results uh, okay. in solving several cases. Now, Drew, yes, I, I'm well aware of that. And what we have always said at the James Randi Educational Foundation, if one of these psychics can prove one case, they will win the million dollars. Because police departments are the first people to tell you that they get lots of reactions from psychics who lead them all over the map, give them all kinds of wrong information, and slow things down in investigation. There have been books written about this showing you right. just how inefficient they are. Now, there's a difference between people who think that they have psychic abilities that are ongoing and unwilling to prove them, but say that they can, and people who believe that something happened in the past. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, of course. And so the people that you're interested in discussing and analyzing aren't people who believe that an event of religious significance happened in the past, but people who believe that they have some sort of ongoing supernatural, preternatural abilities. Exactly, like the police are, for example. We thank you for the call, Drew. Right. Let's, we have another call coming in. Professor Randy, can you tell us what kinds of applicants have you received in the past to your $1 million challenge? Can well, we've had them? hundreds of them, of course, as you can imagine, Steve. And uh, the vast majority of them, I'd say a good 80 to 85 percent of them, are water dowsers or people with fork sticks or with pendulums or with parallel coat hanger wires who say that they can find anything from water to gold to missing children uh, to uh, uh, lost jewelry, all sorts of things like that. The dowsers, they are the, ma the majority of the people that come to us, and we've tested literally hundreds of them all over the world. Not one of them has ever passed the preliminary test. What kind of controlled environment do you set up for these dowsers to de try to demonstrate their abilities? Well, it depends what they claim. You see, there are two uh, classes of dowsers. 
Uh, half of them say, about half of them say that you must wear rubber insulating footwear. The other half say you must never wear rubber insulating footwear. So you've got the, the two different claims right there. Uh, it depends on what the individual dowager says that he or she can do. Some of them say they can only find water. Some of them say they can only find running water underground. Some of them say that they can only find fresh water. They can't find salt water. And it goes on and on like this. You have to decide well, with the, with the dowager or with the claimant themselves exactly what they say they can do and under what circumstances. You see, we ask every applicant for these three, three statements. What can you do? with what accuracy, under what conditions. Now that seems simple enough, but some people we have to negotiate for months with before they can finally come up with a statement about what they think they can do, with what accuracy, under what circumstances, before we can design a test for them. And you have a list of hundreds of these applicants on your website, randi.org, who've applied the claims they've made. Some of these claims have just been some of the most outrageous claims that I've, I can possibly imagine. Well, how are these are these people actually convinced that they have these abilities? I assume they are, which is the reason they're applying. Oh, yes, but there are some of them, like John Edward, uh, Sylvia Brown, uh, uh, James Von Prague, people like this, who are using a system called cold reading. We, we, uh, we discussed that at length on the, the website, exactly how it's done and how you can do it yourself, as a matter of fact, which is a, is a trick technique where you can make people believe that you're telling them things uh, that uh, they didn't know before or that you couldn't possibly have known. There are very few of uh, the very small percentage, I would say, of the people who ever contact us who are actually knowing fakes. The rest of them are all naive people who either don't know how to test themselves or don't know that what they're doing is a perfectly ordinary thing. And have you had anybody who's come close to passing the preliminary test to get on to the, the test? No, we haven't. It's like being pregnant. You either are or you aren't. We have David on line four. We'll come back to him in just a second. Please stay on the line with us. Sure. We'll be right back on the commercial break. Call it 254-5855. Mark Maxon, he's on K-Talk. AM 630 KTKK. Oh, no. Out of toner again? One name out of laser toner cartridges is costing us time and money. Luke, I have a solution. Call Spectrum Inc. They've been in business for 12 years. Their phone number is 296-0963. I talked to John, told him what I needed, and in two hours, he delivered two laser toner cartridges and cleaner printer free of charge. That's customer service. Don't get any of that at an office supply store. What's their number? 296-0963. Stephanie, they got there fast, but how's their quality? John said they replaced drums, blades, and thoroughly tested every laser toner cartridge before delivery. Wow, that's real quality control. I bet they overcharged you. No, Luke. I compared prices. They have the best price on laser toner cartridges. Cool. 12 years in business, great customer service, thoroughly tested cartridges, best prices. That's the company we want. Call Spectrum Inc. today and receive a free ream of paper at 296-0963. Or you can email Spectrum Inc. at spectruminc at AOL.com. Spectrum Inc. 296-0963. Come join us at the Best Western Cotton Tree Inn in Sully. Whether it's a romantic getaway in one of our honeymoon suites or a weekend family outing relaxing by a 24 hour clear and hot tub, everyone will be sure to enjoy our free hot breakfast. Served with eggs, hash browns, Belgian waffles, French toast, food, tasters, and much more. We also offer fresh baked cookies, free hot tea, narrowly filling it, a fitness center, and shuttle service. We are conveniently located by many shopping centers and numerous restaurants. Call for your reservations today, 801-523-8484. That's 801-523-8484. Be sure to mention the PayPal Radio listener special discounted rate of $69. Best Western Cotton Tree Inn is located at 106 South Adamar Drive in Sandy. 801-523-8484. Call for your reservations today, 801-523-8484. That's 801-523-8484. Hey, Dex. Hello. How's everything going in the pantry? Oh, I'm fine. Canned goods are fine. Cereals fine. Shelves are fine. We're all fine. What's that over there? Uh, just some recycling. What's that on top? Uh, some phone directory. Oh. 
well, why are you recycling it? Because I have you next. <laughs> really? You know more real estate agents and restaurants and accountants and kennels and mold inspection slash removal specialists and fish hatcheries, equipment and suppliers, and yoga instruction and barbers and computer dealers. <laughs> Go on. And comedy clubs and car rental agencies and chimneys and decks. No one has more accurate local business information. No one has more current listings. And no one has more ways to get the most complete local information available. In Spanish, on CD-ROM, or at DexOnline.com. So, uh, what'd you use that phone book for? Lots of things. Supplies, water, paperweight, kindling. <laughs> Go on. You get the idea. Dex, the one that gets used. Dex knows. What's for you, new Dex? Salt Lake City Yellow Pages. Coming to your door soon. To get additional directories or CD-ROM, call 1-800-422-8793. Stimulating, thought-provoking, and sometimes just out there. Mark Maxon is on K-Talk. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt filling in for Mark Maxon tonight. We've got James Randi on the phone with us of the James Randi Educational Foundation. You can go to their website, www.randi.org. They offer a million dollars to anybody who can prove that they have any sort of supernatural abilities. In the decades that they've been since they've started, no one has been able to do it. James, are you still with us? Oh yes. We have a caller who would like to speak with you. He's on line four. Let's go to him now. David in Salt Lake City. David, are you there? I am. Thank you for calling into the program tonight. Oh, you're welcome. What question did you have? Well, do you think that say not you, but say if the average person were to offer a reward like that, um, even somebody who is fairly observant, that he could be easily fooled that there's a lot of say charlatans and people who know magic and tricks, and that that, that the average person could could be made to believe there is supernatural things, or it's really just sleight of hand. Well, there for one thing, I'm a master magician myself. That's what I'm saying. If you weren't, if, if you were just an average person, could easily be fooled. Yes, that's very true. And the average person is uh, easily often fooled. Uh, and, and these people who are fooled, when they finally uh, get completely convinced that somebody has got some power or some powers over them, they not only want to believe, but they need to believe. That's why they ignore all further evidence. They turn off at a certain point, and they just don't accept any more evidence especially if someone like myself gives it to them. But I am very experienced, and I also have a very large group of people all over the world who are similarly experienced and uh, can, uh, uh, can offer their advice and uh, can do the investigation for us. Because we don't go out to foreign countries in order to make the investigations unless we would absolutely have to, and I can't imagine a circumstance that would give rise to that condition. What we do is we have our local representatives in, in those areas go out and do the investigation for us. Well, you have to train people to do that, then. Well, not necessarily. They, they're, they're, they're usually they're, already trained. They're, 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 you found people who are qualified to do that. Yes, indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, I guess you've heard of Houdini. He, he sort of debunked a lot of se seances, and so he's also a very skilled magician, and you know, he found a lot of fraud in that. And so on. Oh, yes. He, well, he was very limited in what he investigated, because in those days it was spiritualism that was right. the most popular thing. Uh -huh. People who were doing uh, seances. Right. He was able to debunk those, you know. Um, you know, I know that there was Scientific American investigation of that. They offered a prize like that. You know, they only thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. And that was a lot of money back then. Right. Now he was he was able sort of to, to find the fraud right away with some of the other people who were fooled because you know the guys had a scientific background, they didn't have a background in magic, so they they could be That's fooled. True. Yep. So well, well thank thank yeah. you for calling David. Yeah. Do you have any other questions for uh, James? I guess not. We've got another caller calling in we'll go to in just a just a minute. Can you tell us, James, what other kinds of people have investigated these claims? He, the caller just mentioned Harry Houdini. Carl Sagan wrote a book on this type of thing, and he actually commented on you personally several times. We have some quotes he said here about you. What kind of views did he have compared to your own? Do you see things much the same way that you do? Well, very much the same way, but uh, remember Carl did look at it as an academic, as a scientist, uh, in, a, in a slightly different approach. And uh, he certainly would have depended on me to solve any of the the uh, magic tricks that were being done by these so-called psychics. Uh, he wouldn't have tried to do it on his own. I think he was wise enough uh, to know the difference. Uh, I have acted as consultant for many reputable people who everybody knows uh, who still don't have the expertise that, that a magician would have. It's a very specialized knowledge. We have a caller 
James in Springville on line two. We'll go to in just a moment. What are some of the most outrageous claims that you've received? I have, a, I have an idea because on your website you have hundreds of them listed, and I'm seeing things, people think, who think that they're aliens and want their DNA tested. It looks like there was one like this on there today. Uh, you get all sorts of claims like this, it looks like. Oh, yes. Uh, besides dowsing claims, that's the people with the fork sticks or the, or the, the dowsing rods or whatever they decide they're going to use or pendulums. Besides that, the, the most common claim is people who can diagnose and can heal at a distance. And, of course, uh, what we do with most of these people is I send them a set of anywhere from 12 to 20 photographs, and I ask them a very simple question. If they can diagnose from photographs, and most of them claim that they can do that, I simply ask them, uh, what is the state of health of, of these various people that we're sending you? And I tell them I'm going to make it very easy for them. They're either alive or they're dead. You tell us which ones are alive I and which ones are dead. dead. They don't seem to want to do that test. Now, death is a symptom that even I, not medically trained at all, would recognize, I think, immediately. And you don't think these people are frauds. You think that they actually believe that they can do this healing. I want, how do they respond to your test? Do they feel like you're trying to do something subversive to their abilities? Or do they suddenly realize that they, in fact, can't diagnose these things and give up? No, no, they never give up. They never give up. I have never had one person in all the uh, the uh, <laughs> decades now that I've investigated these people. I'm 77 now, and I've done it since I was 15 years of age. And of all of those people, and all that time, those thousands of people all over the world, not one of them has ever changed his or her mind about having psychic powers. They, they maintain it because, as I said previously, they don't only want it to be true, they need it to be true, and they will ignore all evidence against it. It's a religious fanaticism almost in a sense. Oh, absolutely. It is. It has become their religion. We have a call, James on line two from our Provo line. We'll have a commercial break in a minute. We'll hold him through the line. Let's go to him now. James, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Wait, do we have two James on the line? Okay. Caller, would you have a question for James or Andy? Yeah, are you talking James in Springville? Yes, James in Springville. Well, I don't have a question. I guess what I wanted to call and, and comment on was I was a little disappointed, I guess, in how uh, the host and the guest are both characterizing maybe people who have these beliefs or a faith in a religion or an idea about something that they can't necessarily prove. Um, it's probably more so the, the host than, than the guest who's kind of skated around the inference that people who are involved with religion are somehow cognitively different than the rest of society, maybe suffering from an illness or... Now, now, I'm a religious person myself, and I don't feel like religion, religious people suffer from any sort of mental illness. But I do feel like people who believe that they have an ability that they should be able to prove scientifically but are unable to prove it scientifically are suffering some, from some sort of disconnect with reality. Would you agree, James? How I would disagree entirely because the, the whole idea of the anecdotal fallacy of logic I mean, you can't apply that to a lot of things. If I tell you, I mean, because I've had an interesting experience in my house. I'm not really into paranormal things, but I had, you know, I took a photograph the other day, and we saw there was an orb in a photograph that my wife complained about. She felt someone push her head in the shower one morning and this type of thing. Now, I, we probably wouldn't be able to duplicate that under controlled circumstances or uncontrolled circumstances, but that doesn't invalidate it. It doesn't yeah, prove that it's not true. Very true, but the orbs that you're seeing, I, I can I can ask you a couple of simple questions. First of all, was it a digital camera? It was a digital camera. Yes, this is a is an artifact of digital photography. Was a flash used? Uh, you know, a, a flash was used. I'm, I'm not going to try to argue about the the okay because the when you show the show are entirely possible, it's always digital cameras that use flash. Hey, will you both please stand in line with us? We have to take another quick commercial break. Sure. Call like two five four five eight five five. I'll just fix it now for five eight five five. No more questions. Five eight five five. We'll be right back. Two minutes break. Mark Maxon is on K Talk. AM six thirty KTKK.
Do we have to wait for that perfect job or that perfect relationship in order to feel complete? What if real fulfillment and satisfaction comes from something deeper, something always with us? Hear how learning more about one's connection to God brings that fulfillment on the next radio edition of the Christian Science Sentinel. Join us this Sunday at 9.05 a.m. Sponsored by the Salt Lake City Christian Science Churches. Visit spirituality.com. K-Talk invites you to get your share of our big fun giveaway. To win a $100 bill and your phone rings, don't say hello, say, At home, at work, and in the car, I listen to K-Talk. For money to come any easier than this, you'd have to be a lawyer. We're calling all of us out at the front. Put a note by your phone. When it rings, don't say hello. For a free $100 bill, say, At home, at work, and in the car, I listen to K-Talk. Hi, Curtis Hansel here to help you get started in real estate investing. With your good credit, you can own an investment property with little or no out-of-pocket expense. That same property will appreciate over time, paying you handsomely when you finally sell it. Put some extra cash in your pocket this month. Call me, 635-9599, or log on to my website, myutahproperties.com. 635-9599, myutahproperties.com. Let's get started. If you were as right as he is, would you be full of yourself, too? Mark Maxon, he's on K-Talk. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt, filling in for Mark Maxon tonight. Salt Lake 254-5855, Provo 470-5855, Ogden 670-5855. Born with James Randi, who is the founder of the James Randi Educational Foundation, which offers a $1 million reward to anybody who can prove that they have any sort of extra sensory abilities. Now, caller, uh, you're still with us. Yeah. Yeah, you've described a couple of unexplainable events, which it sounds like could be technical. But there's a lot of explanations for how they might have occurred. But I wouldn't characterize you as being having the same personality as the other, these other people who believe that they have an ongoing ability to create these events. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, and I'm not really interested in this kind of stuff. I mean, it was an interesting thing when we talked about it. Uh, my wife and I we looked at the internet, and well, you know, it's just interesting. We don't really care that much about it, but. What troubles me is, is just the discussion and kind of like, to me it seems like a meaningless exercise to come out and say, okay, uh, those of you out there that are ignorant and educated, I, I mean, previously, uh, Mr. Rand compared Mormons to people who believe the earth was flat. And in, in kind of a broad, uh, inference, I mean, he didn't do it directly, but that was, that was what I drew out of it. And, and I just, you know, I think that's insulting. I think to, to go out and say I've got a million dollars to, you know, to mean these people that, that believe in something strongly, that it brings meaning to their life, that it's important to them. Uh, it's I think you're saying that you're though. making, that you're attributing to me, that you're not true at all. I, I, I do not. Uh, the, the gentleman who called me and said, well, there's 10 million Mormons that believe, and I'm not Mormon, incidentally. He says, there's 10 million Mormons that believe in Joseph Smith. Yes, I know that, but they will be a lot more people. That is another. Well, let me finish what I was saying. Uh, the guy said there's 10 million people that believe in Joseph Smith, and then he tore it back to him like, well, there's a lot more people than that that believe that the earth is flat. So that, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of that, that connection you're trying to make between the two. No, 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 no. I wasn't trying to make any connection. I was pointing out that the fact that, that, that 10 million people believe something doesn't necessarily make it true. It just means that 10 million people believe it's true. And, and that is fine. And what is and I said also, it may be true. I'm not saying it's not true. Okay. Then they are saying, yes, it is true. If you can prove it, win a million dollars. I'm offering a million dollars to someone to prove it, and you know and so and is unable to prove it, therefore you undermine the credibility of them, and, and therefore you... I'm we just lost James. But we are not trying to offend any any religious perspectives of any kind. Are you still with us, James Randy? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take another call from Chad in uh, Linden. Chad, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you guys doing? Good, good. Thanks for calling in. Good, show. good. Interesting topic. Um, I, I have a question for your guest, and uh, I, I myself have uh, studied uh, uh, all of these things for a, a while, and um, my comment might seem uh, somewhat foreign. Uh, maybe you've heard it before, but... Uh, I do believe in, uh, in uh, the vibrational frequency of this, uh, of this reality and this, uh, everything in it. And I'm just wondering if, uh, 
If you expect the other dimension to actually manifest itself, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you, can you hold on for just, just a few There we go. All right. Because now I'm wondering if he expects the other dimension to actually manifest itself either to him or to somebody that, that is trying to get a million dollars to prove it. Uh, basically, full profit. Um, what what the, the other dimension uh, that is so close to ours, the little fourth dimension, uh, exists or not, whether it exists or not, he will never see proof, okay? Because because it's for profit, it's for gain. Not for him, I understand. Uh, he, he, you know, he's offering the money. But uh, uh, people have to understand uh, that we live in a vibrational frequency. The lower vibration oh, is, is such nonsense. You, are, you don't even know what a vibration is. If I gave you a bushel basket full of them, you couldn't identify them any different from crab apples. You keep talking about vibrations and frequencies. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, I appreciate you giving me uh, uh, your opinion. Uh, we've only heard uh, what, about a half hour. Uh, half That's all I needed. Okay, so uh, so quantum physics doesn't work for you. <laughs> you don't know what quantum means. Come on okay. now, you're not informed on these subjects, and there's no sense in my arguing with you. If you were speaking a totally different African language that I knew not one word of, it would make just as much sense. I see. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to come out and call sure that people remember and be informed. Uh, this man is a paid disinformant. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, believe me, people. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the call, right. Chad. Yeah. Well, that, that's the, the subject, the, the refuge that these people have. They have to assume that I'm with the CIA or some dastardly thing like that, and I do nasty things. Probably I torture frogs to death in the dark, too. <laughs> but they, they, they make these assumptions because they just can't believe that anyone is not taken in by nonsense. By the way, I'm going to have to excuse myself because I have another program coming up at the top of the hour. We thank you for being with us very much. James Randy and R-A-N-D-I dot org. We'll be back after this commercial break in a minute. Thank you. Mark Maxon is on K-Talk. AM 630 KTKK. Come join us at the best looking cotton tree room in Sandy. Whether it's a romantic getaway in one of our honeymoon suites or a weekend family outing in a relaxing bar 24 hours for a hot tub, everyone will be sure to enjoy our full hot breakfast. There's an ace, hash brown, Belgian waffles, French toast, food, sisters, and much more. We also offer first rate cookies, free high speed wireless internet, a fitness center, and shutter service. We are conveniently located by many shopping centers and numerous restaurants. Copy your reservations today. 801 523 8484. That's 801 523 8484. Be sure to mention the K Talk Radio listener special discounted rate of $69. Best Western Cotton Tree Inn is located at 106 95 South Adamar Drive in Sandy. 801 523 823-8484. Some doors are good, some are better. The best doors you can get for quality, price, and value are found at Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Prices Guaranteed Doors. For 22 years, Prices Doors has been an industry leader in customer satisfaction. Right now, it's the scratch and dent sale on single and double wide doors. Hurry in for the best selection. Overhead doors have more options, more styles, more colors, more features, all at the lowest prices. You'll get the best for less right now. Check the website at PricesDoors.com or call 975-7575. 975-7575. Serving the Wasatch Front. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Don't miss the once a year scratch and dent sale. Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of prices guaranteed doors. Visit the website or call 975-7575. The prices are the best. Call now and you will be happy and save money. The Voice of Utah. The Sound of Freedom. AM 630 KTKK. CNN Radio. I'm Matt Shelley. Score one for prosecutors in the Enron case. 
CNN's Ali Velshi reports that former Chief Accounting Officer Richard Causey has struck a plea bargain with the feds and will apparently testify against former bosses Kenneth Lay and Jeffrey Skilling. The government wants to go against these guys in a big way. They want to make a, a stand on this one. This is the biggest of the big in terms of the uh, corporate shenanigan cases that we've seen over the last few years. Ken Lay is going to make the point that well, everybody's looking after their own hide right now. They'll say whatever the government wants them to say. Ali Valshi, CNN, New York. The heat is on in Oklahoma and Texas, where grass fires are causing problems for both residents and the terrain. Major Brian Stanland of the Oklahoma City Fire Department says the biggest fire was in the nearby town of Mustang. A very large fire that burned several square miles, including numerous houses that were burned near the area of, of Highway 152 and Sarah Road. This is actually in the city of Mustang, and again, we assisted Mustang Fire Department with that. Numerous structures in Oklahoma have been destroyed at disaster declarations in place in Texas, where dozens of the fires are burning in the northern and central parts of the state. Insurance losses from the Gulf Coast hurricanes are estimated at nearly $58 billion. Meantime, CNN's Kareem Winter reports 49 people have been indicted for allegedly booking thousands of dollars from the Hurricane Katrina Red Cross Fund. The Red Cross made it clear that they treat donors as investors, that they, they appreciate every penny, and they don't want to deter uh, the public who may be seeing this story and saying, well, I'm going to keep my money in my, in my pocket. Some of the suspects are accused of helping family and friends file false claims for aid money. It's believed that a mass grave that's been discovered in the Iraqi city of Kerbala dates back to 1991, when Saddam Hussein defeated a Shiite uprising. The remains of up to 20 people were found. The most trusted name of news, this is CNN Radio. If you're self-employed or you run a small business and you need competitive health insurance, pick up the phone right now and call Mega Health, 866-500-MEGA. You don't even have to leave your home or office. Call us now and a friendly Mega Health representative will come to you and explain your health insurance options. So again, if you're self-employed, run a small business, or if you're on a COBRA plan and it's about to expire and you need dependable, reliable health insurance, Call Mega Health now for a free quote. 866 500 Mega. 866 500 Mega. 866 500 MEGA. These competitive health insurance plans are underwritten by the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company, and coverage may not be available in all states. So call now and see if you qualify. 866 500 Mega. 866 500 Mega. 866 500 MEGA. The numbers from the holiday shopping season are starting to trickle in. Senior equity analyst Jeff Kleinfelter of Piper Jeffrey says it appears there is growth over last year's sales. We're looking for 4 to 6 percent going into the holiday season. Uh, we think it's going to be comfortably in that range, and it could potentially match last year's growth rate, which I believe was about 8.5 percent, that being the best uh, holiday growth rate in the prior five years. Kleinfelter predicts holiday gift cards will mean a strong January for retailers. Gas prices are expected to go up in 2006, according to Tom Closa of the Oil Price Information Service. I think by the time you see buds coming out in southeastern states, midwestern states, uh, you, you won't see any prices uh, at $2 or less. The average cost of a gallon of regular stands at about $2.18. On Wall Street, the Dow Industrials fall 105 points Tuesday. The Nasdaq loses 22 points. The S&P 500 drops 12. This is CNN Radio. This is Rocky Moselle with International Star Registry. Give someone special to you the gift that will be remembered for years to come. Name a star after them. The Star Registry will name a star after anyone on your gift list for $54 at a call to 800-282-3333 or visit StarRegistry.com. It's the perfect gift for birthdays, weddings, and just about any occasion. Give the ultimate gift. Call the Star Registry at 800-282-3333 or visit StarRegistry.com. We proudly support the Star Light, Star Bright Children's Foundation. I'm a woman. I like things like movies with dialogue and slutty sets. I like hot cocoa on a rainy day. I like the weird cocoa. But most of all, I like my big fat hog. Which is why I have Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Geico covers most kinds of bike and money saving discounts. Mmm, Geico. That's nice. For a free rate quote on motorcycle insurance, visit Geico.com or call 1 800 44 Cycle. Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Let's ride. Take us in the 
front lot. Learn from the credit mistakes of others. Your credit limit will never be high enough to make them all yourself. And now I'd like to introduce the man who will put the you in improvement. Hi, Mark Marine here with Marine Credit Systems. I'm the car dealership where you kick the dealer, not the tires. Lesson number one, it's simple. Do not sign blank paperwork. Blank applications and contracts are a sure sign that your car deal is going to have ugly written all over it. And never sign duplicate paperwork, which behind the scenes is also known as just-in-case paperwork. Let me help you out here. Get pre-approved. It's a beautiful thing. And stay away from the ugly. I'll just have to settle for being a fat, bald, fat, nutty. Oh, wow. Go to markmarine.com or call Marine Credit Systems. 467-9980. 467-9980. Weak-minded, faint of heart, or just haven't got a clue? Then you should be watching television. This is radio. Free of mindless gibberish of the politically misguided. This is the Mark Maxon Show on K-Talk. Welcome back to the Mark Maxon Show. I'm Steve Reinhardt filling in for Mark tonight. As our listeners from the previous hour noted, we're talking about strange beliefs that people have. And the reason that we got on this subject is because we get so many of these calls here at the station. I've got Trevor, a good friend of mine here in studio with me. And on, Steve. Good. Good. And we had James Randi on who discussed some of these things. These beliefs become, as he described, almost a religion for these people. Wouldn't you agree, Trevor? Yeah, it's it's a it's hoaxes. I mean, how far can you buy into a hoax? And you know, a lot of a lot of problems about hoaxes is that when you go back to the source of of the hoax, you have something to believe in or not to believe in, and, and uh, I think what uh, James Randi was trying to do is show that these sources of hoaxes are are false. So for example, there's one guy he's been trying well, to be. I don't know if he's trying to do that. I think he's just trying to say that you have to be able to prove. Well, yeah. Well, for example, that guy uh, Yuri Geller. He's he's a world famous spoon bender. He looks at spoons and they bend somehow, and and uh, you know. Uh, Doctor or Mr. Randy says, you know, well, prove it to me, Yuri Geller. Show me that you can actually do it. I'll give you a spoon, and, and you sit down in this room, and you bend that spoon. And it's never happened. And Yuri Geller's got a fast million to make doing it, but he's not going to do it. It's just not going to happen because, you know, you're bringing in magic. But when, you, when people like Yuri Geller say that they have this power, and, and they're not using, you know, illusionism or, or whatever, that's when people are starting to believe in, in hoaxes that, that tend to lead them down a path that, of, of distortion of facts, uh, distortion of truth, and, and they get in, into these things of like believing that Bush, uh, you know, caused these uh, problems with 9-11, caused the problems with Katrina, and you just start buying into all these things that people are out there to keep you from knowing the truth, which is usually the opposite. People, we didn't have time to ask Mr. Randy about it, but let's review some of the applications that he's got, people who think that they have paranormal abilities. We have someone here, I'm going to read, read to you from some of the applications that he received. In a closed, please find a signed and notarized application form for the $1 million paranormal challenge. The special ability I will demonstrate is that I am not human and possibly of alien origin. To prove this, I will provide a tissue, hair, or other sample of myself to the James Randi Educational Foundation. The test will come back as not Cro-Magnon, not human, or unable to identify, contaminate, other, etc. So this person thinks that they're an alien. And, of course, they never ended up providing a sample. Here's another one. I will telepathically cast a demon out of a person. Without prior knowledge or even an understanding what is happening, this person will respond with some kind of audible or visual response. The observer will know when I cast him out, but no person will hear anything. There will not be one word spoken, nor will his lips move. Here's another one. I will demonstrate my ability to diagnose a person's disease dysfunction by the use of intuitive capability. 
The website's www.randi.com. And I'm going to read quickly to you something that's, that's along these lines from the news today. As we review in the news, which we're going to get to on the current events for the day, we, there's, there was an interesting story which relates a little bit to our discussion today. Mexico City, it says, a judge commuted eight relatives to the psychiatric ward Thursday for the ritualistic slayings of two young family members. Officials said the parents, grandparents, and aunts of a seven-month-old and 13-year-old hacked the baby to death and fatally stoned the teenager earlier this month after they became convinced the girls were demons or possessed by the devil. Judge Anne Marie Ray Arazzo, who committed each family member to 40 years, told the Associated Press that they had acknowledged killing the girls to save themselves from demons. The, the slayings were accompanied by prayers, candle lighting, and a sacrifice of farm animals, officials said. A ninth sub subject, suspect, an aunt, described as the instigator of the slayings, was also committed to the psychiatric hospital after she became catatonic on the heels of her arrest. This was prompted by her visit, the slayings to a faith healer, authorities said. The family members were suffering from a delusional psychotic state with hallucinations, Ray Raza said by telephone from Pinjamo, the Guatemala state in remote, west, remote western Mexico where the killings occurred. For example, they said they saw animals, demons, and, and lights in the girls. The animals' faces, the faces of monkeys, that they had demons inside and had to be killed in order to save the adults. After being tipped off to the killings by an anonymous phone call, officers traveled to the family's hamlet and found the baby girl mutilated and the body of a 13-year-old uh, tied to a stake and battered to death. About 10 children and adults, members of the extended family of about 30, were locked in a house where they had been confined for three days, apparently because they were also suspected of being possessed, authorities said. Goats, pigs, and chickens had been sacrificed at the site, according to police report. The judge found that the children's parents took part in the killing, but were not responsible for the murder due to insanity. The teacher's grandfather and three aunts were also commuted. The family members could be released before four years of psychiatric tests proved they have recovered. But this is the kind of fanaticism. It's, it's the kind of thing that, if, that results from these, from these irrational obsessions. We've got a call or comment on line three we'll get to in, in just a minute. The phones are open, 254-5855, Provo 670-5855, uh, excuse me, I'll get 670-5855, Provo 470-5855. Before we switch over to current events, we'll take a, a quick call from David. But we're interested in what you, our listeners, have to say about Mr. Randy and the things we've discussed on the air. Let's go to David quickly on line three. David, are you with us? Sure. Uh, we appreciate the call. Have you got a comment or a question? No, I did. I, I was going to go on to another so uh, topic, more metaphysical. But if, if you want to stick to uh, the medical metaphysical of this religious incident down there, I, I, can, I can talk about that. Well, we just want to talk about whatever you comment you had in mind when you called the show. No, I, I called about the, you. You gentlemen believe that that there is a soul. It's inside our vessel, correct? I think both of us here are religious religious people, but we're trying to distinguish between that and believing that there's some sort of ongoing ability or I've been in a lifetime to study that this this particular phenomena, whether there is a soul, whether there isn't a soul, and then how to detect it through scientific equipment. And I'm sure that you have strong personal beliefs about that. Well, I, I do. Obviously, if I spent that many years and I came up with nothing, I'd be a little disappointed, kind of like. Newton and, and his quest for alchemy, huh? Well, is it possible that perhaps you got so obsessed with discovering whether there was a soul or not that like some of these other people who did clearly irrational things that you've started uh, Possibility. looking for evidence of it to the point that, you, that you're not able to see evidence that, that, either, that either that evidence isn't there or that it's contradictory? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you what, what I have. There's a machine called an EEG machine. What does EEG stand for? Ecl uh, electroencephalogram. Where do you pick one of those up at? Uh, well, what they are, a lot of the 
thousands of people in meditation, biofeedback, and uh, psychiatrists have that to, to check on your your uh, your frequency of your brain at different different periods of time. So the EEG machine reads at your your brain wave patterns and the electrocardiogram. That's for your your heartbeat. But the EEG machine, my hypothesis is that it actually detects your soul, so that your your brain wave that pattern is actually your, the electromagnetism is your uh, is your soul. So, but it's in your waking phase. So you've attached this machine to people. You found some sort of wave reading from them. No, it's just normal people. No, the, the normal people have a, have a normal reading, and that's in your awake phase. And that's the soul. The soul in that person is in the awake phase. And with each person, while you're awake, you're giving off a particular brain wave. Now, it's very similar. The, the man next to you, he's giving off one. You're awake. But when you're asleep, then you're giving off a different brain pattern. And your soul is in a different state that they, they would call that. It could be the, the alpha state or the beta state, or it could be a, an, another state. Not the state of Utah, though. Uh, you're sleeping in the state of Utah while you're hooked up to this machine. This is, this is your uh, hypothesis, obviously. If you're so convinced that this is true, why do you think that the scientific community has rejected ideas like this? You know, there, there's a new generation that are, that are coming through, like myself, that have studied East and West, that have studied all the religions, and then have studied all the sciences, and as well as the advanced sciences. So most of the people that are currently in these positions... They haven't studied as much as I've studied. Right. Been how, do you, doing, how do you respond to the, to the fact that there's other people who are equally convinced as you of other things? that No one's denied it. Aliens are responsible for the JFK assassination. Oh, we're, no, we're talking to aliens here. Think, think about the logicness. But these people are as equally convinced that there are certain uh, beliefs about these other esoteric, enigmatic things are, are as real as yours. And they, this they, was mine. So they call in and offer us videos and books. And I, you know, you sound like an well, I'm talking about it at all. They're talking about what UFOs. Well, we get all I'm telling you is that the EEG machine is a as a detector of the state that your soul is while you're hooked up to that machine. And if you choose to change it to a, a beta phase, that'll be the disposition of your soul. See, but anybody could refute that and say that's an electrochemical process going on in the body, that, and, and, and that's what the reading is showing, is, is electricity, uh, a, a wavelength of... Correct. And so, I said, how, does that, how does that just connect to the soul? The thing is, is that... I'm saying that is, food, or, is, that is the soul, that electrochemical is the soul, the chemical... Okay, we don't need a quick break. Thank you, Bob. Call you. Thank you very much. It's a problem. Just look into it. Mark Masson, he's on K-Talk, AM 630, KTKK. Come join us at the best second cotton tree room in Sandy. Whether it's a romantic getaway in one of our honeymoon suites or a weekend family outing, we're lasting by a 24-hour pool and hot tub. Everyone will be sure to enjoy our pool hot breakfast. Filled with eggs, hash browns, Belgian waffles, French toast, fruit, pastries, and much more. We also offer fresh baked cookies, free high speed wireless internet, a fitness center, and shuttle service. We are conveniently located by many shopping centers and numerous restaurants. Call for your reservations today. 801 523 8484. That's 801 523 8484. Be sure to mention the KCOS radio listener special discounted rate of $69. Best Western Hot and Tree Room is located at 106 Automatic Ride and Sandy. 801 523 8484. Call for your reservations today. 801 523 8484. That's 801 523 8484. Like a little product, let's talk business. Door Lock Self Storage is a good business decision. Call 566 8900. Gain extra office space. Increase retail sales space. Enjoy a clutter free work environment. Organize important documents. Access your stores seven days a week. Could your business use a little room to grow? Many storage sizes to choose from 5x5 to 10x25. 
Door and Lock is convenient, saves you money, and be secure. Door and Lock, 86 points south, 300 west, or call 566-8900. That's 566-8900. When life becomes cluttered, stop it at Door and Lock, 566-8900. Listen, you heard this ad on TikTok Radio and get a free lock or a storage surprise. That's 566-8900. A new voice for the Renaissance region, Mark Maxon, is on K-Talk. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt, filling in for Mark Max on tonight. Salt Lake City, 254-5855, Provo, 470-5855, Ogden, 670-5855. We're going to move on to current events. We're going to talk about the direction that the Republican Party is headed and the direction that the Democratic Party is headed. We have a speech that introduces the next segment of the show tonight that we're going to play for you. This is a Bill Miller speech from the Republican National Convention. We want to discuss some things that are in it. It'll take a few minutes, and we'll be back after it's over. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Since I last stood in this spot, a whole new generation of the Miller family has been born. Four great-grandchildren, along with all the other members of our close-knit family, they are my and Shirley's most precious possessions. And I know that's how you feel about your family also. Like you, I think of their future the promises and the perils they will face. Like you, I believe that the next four years will determine what kind of world they will grow up in. And like you, I ask, which leader is it today that has the vision, the willpower, and yes, the backbone to best protect my family? The clear answer to that question has placed me in this hall with you tonight. For my family is more important than my party. There is but one man to whom I am willing to entrust their future, and that man's name is George W. Bush. I was an eight-year-old boy living in a remote little Appalachian Valley. Our country was not yet at war, but even we children knew that there were some crazy men across the ocean who would kill us if they could. President Roosevelt, in a speech that summer, told America all private plans, all private lives have been, in a sense, repealed by an overriding public danger. In 1940, Wendell Wilkie was the Republican nominee, and there is no better example of someone repealing their private plans than this good man. He gave Roosevelt the critical support he needed for a peacetime draft, an unpopular idea at the time. And he made it clear that he would rather lose the election than make national security a partisan campaign issue. Shortly before, shortly before Wilkie died, he told a friend that if he could write his own epitaph and had to choose between here lies a president or here lies one who contributed to saving freedom, he would prefer the latter. Where are such statesmen today? Where is the bipartisanship in this country when we need it most? Okay? Today, at the same time, young Americans are dying in the sands of Iraq and the mountains of Afghanistan. Our nation is being torn apart and made weaker because of a Democrat's manic obsession to bring down our Commander-in-Chief. What has happened to the party I've spent my life working in? 
I can remember when Democrats believed it was the duty of America to fight for freedom over tyranny. It was Democratic President Harry Truman who pushed the Red Army out of Iran, who came to the aid of Greece when communists threatened to overthrow it, who stared down the Soviet blockade of West Berlin by flying in supplies and saving the city. Time after time in our history, in the face of great danger, Democrats and Republicans worked together to ensure that freedom would not falter. But not today. Not are good, some are better. The best stores you can get for quality, price, and value are found at Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Prices Guaranteed Doors. For 22 years, Prices Doors has been an industry leader in customer satisfaction. Right now, it's the scratch and dent sale on single and double wide doors. Hurry in for the best selection. Overhead Doors have more options, more styles, more colors, more features, all at the lowest prices. You'll get the best for less right now. Check the website at Prices Doors. Or call 975 7575. 975 7575. Serving the Wasatch Front. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Don't miss the once a year scratch and dent sale. Over the door company of the Great Basin, a division of prices guaranteed doors. Visit the website or call 975 7575. The prices are the best. Call now and you will be happy and save money. Do we have to wait for that perfect job or that perfect relationship in order to feel complete? What if real fulfillment and satisfaction comes from something deeper, something always with us? To hear how learning more about one's connection to God brings that fulfillment on the next radio edition of the Christian Science Sentinel. Join us this Sunday at 9.05 a.m. Sponsored by the Satellite City Christian Science Churches. Visit spirituality.com. Making more sense in a single hour than most politicians do in a lifetime. Mark Maxon is on K Talk. More about partisan politics than by national security, today's Democratic leaders see America as an occupier, not a liberator. And nothing makes this Marine matter than someone calling American troops occupiers rather than liberators. Franklin Roosevelt led an army of liberators, not occupiers. Tell that to the lower half of the Korean Peninsula that is free because Dwight Eisenhower commanded an army of liberators, not occupiers. Tell that to the half a billion men, women, and children who are free today from Poland to Siberia because Ronald Reagan rebuilt a military of liberators, not occupiers. Never in the history of the world has any soldier sacrificed more for the freedom and liberty of total strangers than the American soldier. Now soldiers don't just give freedom abroad. They preserve it for us here at home. For it has been said so truthfully that it is the soldier not the reporter who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the court, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the agitator, who has given us the freedom to protest. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, serves beneath the flag, 
who's coughing his great by the flag, who gives that protester the freedom he abuses to burn that flag. No one should dare to even think about being the commander-in-chief of this country if he doesn't believe with all his heart that our soldiers are liberators abroad and defenders of freedom at home. But don't waste your breath telling that to the leaders of my party today. In their warped way of thinking, America is the problem, not the solution. They don't believe there's any real danger in the world except that which America brings upon itself through our clumsy and misguided foreign policy. It is not their patriotism, it is their judgment that has been so sorely lacking. They claim Carter's pacifism would lead to peace. They were wrong. They claimed Reagan's defense build-up would lead to war. They were wrong. And no pair has been more wrong, more loudly, more often than the two senators from Massachusetts, Ted Kennedy and John Kennedy. Kennedy Kerry has opposed the very weapons system that won the Cold War and that are now winning the war on terror. Listing all the weapons systems that Senator Kerry tried his best to shut down sounds like an auctioneer selling off our national security. But Americans need to know the facts. The B-1 bomber that Senator Kerry opposed dropped 40% of the bombs from the first six months of enduring freedom. The B-2 bomber that Senator Kerry opposed delivered airstrikes against the Taliban in Afghanistan and Ukraine's command post in Iraq. The F-14A Tomcat that Senator Kerry opposed shot down Qaddafi's Libyan rig over the Gulf of Sidra. The modernized F-14D that Senator Kerry opposed delivered missile strikes against Tora Bora. The Apache helicopter that Senator Kerry opposed took out those Republican Guard tanks in Kuwait in the Gulf War. The F-15 Eagle that Senator Kerry opposed flew cover over our nation's capital and this very city after 9-11. I could go on and on and on against the Patriot missile that shot down Saddam Hussein's Scud missiles over Israel, against the Aegis Air Defense Cruiser, against the Strategic Defense Initiative, against the Trident missile, again, again, again. This is, this is the man who wants to be the Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Armed Forces. U.S. forces armed with what? Spitballs? <laughs> Twenty years of folks. Twenty years of folks can tell you much more about a man than 20 weeks of campaign rhetoric. Campaign talk tells people who you want them to think you are. How you vote tells people who you really are deep inside. <laughs> Senator Kerry has made it clear that he would use military force only if approved by the United Nations. Perry would let Paris decide when America needs defending. I will push to decide. John Perry, who says he doesn't like outsourcing, wants to outsource our national security. That's the most dangerous outsourcing of all. This politician wants to be leader of the free world, free for how long? 
uh, more than 20 years on every one of the great issues of freedom and security. John Kerry has been more wrong, more weak, and more wobbly than any other national figure. As a, as a war protester, Kerry blamed our military. As a senator, he voted to weaken our military. And nothing shows that more sadly and more clearly than his vote this year to deny protective armor for our troops in harm's way far away. Mark Maxon is on G Talk. AM 630 KTKK. Oh no, out of toner again? Well, I mean, out of laser toner cartridges is costing us time and money. Luke, I have the solution. Call Spectrum Inc. They've been in business for 12 years. Their phone number is 296-0963. I talked to John, told him what I needed, and in two hours, he delivered two laser toner cartridges and cleaner printer free of charge. That's customer service. Don't get any of that at an office supply store. What's their number? 296-0963. Stephanie, they got there fast, but how's their quality? John said they would push drums, blades, and thoroughly test every laser toner cartridge before delivery. Wow, that's real quality control price, but they overcharged you. No, Luke, I compared prices. They have the best price on laser toner cartridges. Cool. 12 years in business, great customer service, thoroughly tested cartridges, best prices, that's the company we want. Call Spectrum Inc. today and receive a free ream of paper at 296-0963. Or you can email Spectrum Inc. at spectruminc at AOL.com. Spectrum Inc. 296-0963. I like some cookies, potato chips, um, candy, ice cream, melodies, marshmallows, cotton candy. Yes, to their own devices. Children wouldn't always eat right. Chocolate donuts and breakfast. I want pizza, 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 popcorn. That's why they have you. Best fries. And you have it. Wick provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food to women, infants, children. It's confidential and free. To find out more about Wick, our newest location, or if you qualify for our benefits, call 1-866-WIC-INFO. That's 1-866-WIC-INFO. Your time has you, Savorone Pizza, and you have Wick. Brought to you by the National Wick Association and the Ad Council. Oh, come on now. You've never been to Brazza Grill before? Oh, you've been there. So you know what I'm talking about. A mouth-watering flavor that you only get with Brazilian barbecue beef. Mm-hmm. Salad bar. For desserts. Friendly folks. And on top of that, can you imagine? It's all you can eat seafood every Monday night. Now you can eat tiny miracles for one select. Brazza Grill. Mm-hmm. Now that's Brazilian. Brazza Grill. 59, 27, South Coast in Miami. Brazza Grill. Stay tuned. Something good's about to happen. Mark Maxon is on J Talk. George W. Bush understands that we need new strategies to meet new threats. John Kerry wants to refight yesterday's war. President Bush believes we have to fight today's war and be ready for tomorrow's challenges. President Bush is committed to providing the kind of forces it takes to root out terrorists, no matter what spider hole they may hide in or what rock they crawl under. George W. Bush wants to grab terrorists by the throat and not let them go to get a better grip. For John Kerry, they get a yes, no, maybe more mush that can only encourage our enemies and confuse our friends. I first got to know George W. Bush when we served as governors together. I admire this man. I am moved by the respect he shows the First Lady, his unabashed love for his parents and his daughter, and the fact that he is unashamed of his belief that God is not indifferent to America. I 
can identify with someone who has lived that line in amazing grace, was blind but now see. And I like the fact that he's the same man on Saturday night that he is on Sunday morning. He is not a slick talker, but he is a straight shooter. And where I come from, deeds mean a lot more than words. I have knocked on the door of this man's soul and found someone home. A God-fearing man with a good heart and a spine of tempered steel. The man I trust to protect my most precious possession, my family. This election will change forever the course of history. And that's not any history. It's our family's history. The only question is how. The answer lies with each of us. And like many generations before us, we've got some hard choosing to do. Right now, the world just cannot afford an indecisive America. Faint-hearted self-indulgence will put at risk all we care about in this world. In this hour of danger, our president has had the courage to stand up, and this Democrat is proud to stand up with him. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That was John Miller speaking at the Republican National Convention last year. I thought that was a pretty compelling talk. What did you think, Joe? That, that will go down as a big question mark in history. Did he, in fact, change the outcome of, that, of the election with that talk? Democrats were furious that he gave that talk. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing Kerry. He was, funny, he was on the news claiming that he hadn't heard it. The reporter then proceeded to ask him several questions in which Kerry answered in ways that indicate he had obviously heard the talk. He just didn't want people to know that he'd even listened to it. Uh, yeah, who didn't hear that talk that was any any of any political persuasion or mind? I mean, it's just, it was very, very compelling, and it made a really good case for why John Kerry was not suited to do the job. John Miller was the Democratic governor of Georgia, I believe. I believe that... Uh, he finished his term in December. I may be wrong about that. We've only got a few minutes left on the program. I'm Steve Reiner. I'm going in for Mark Max on tonight. Sorry, phone numbers 254-5855, Ogden 670-5855, 404-70-5855. Lines are open. There's a new story we want to talk about very quickly before we get off the line and then discuss some things going on in Utah that are very much related to this news story. This is about a New Orleans police shooting. The title, New Orleans Police Shooting Sparks Probe. More than a dozen New Orleans police officers are off work on administrative leave pending an investigation into their Monday night shooting of a man brandishing a knife. Wait, I, I thought New Orleans was closed for the next nine months. Wasn't it? That was only when they thought there was 50,000 dead. Oh. oh. <laughs> Some witnesses, including one who caught part of the incident on video, said the man seemed dangerous, but others have questioned whether he was actually close enough to harm the officers. He was backing up and was waving his arms, said Finn. Percy, who was filming the confrontation apparently. This went on for maybe three or four minutes, she said, and the number of officers grew from maybe five or six to probably about a dozen. The cops kept telling him, lay down, lay down. He later told ABC News, this, uh, this witness, that he did not think the police had used excessive force in this lethal shooting. I didn't see, there's no witness, Trey Brokaw, who was at a nearby bar, so he saw the victim with a knife shortly before the shooting. I didn't see anyone near him, Brokaw said. It didn't seem like anyone was going to get hurt to me. But Brokaw said he did not see what happened in the final minutes before the shot rang, rang out. Anyway, what ended up happening is this, the police killed this man. They, before the altercation, this 34-year-old man allegedly attacked the manager of a nearby pharmacy. Several officers followed him out into the, into the street. He was waving this knife around. And after being repeatedly asked to drop it, and then beginning and didn't, and he began to walk away with his hands over his face, they shot him. 
The police said claimed he was lunging at them wildly with a knife, and they had no other choice but re to resort to lethal, lethal force. This has not been a good year, would you say, Trevor, for the uh, police department down there in uh, New Orleans? Well, I thought they didn't have a police department either. I thought all their cops deserted and well, didn't show up. They had 120 of them fired for stealing Cadillacs during the, the hurricane. And then the next number was another like 70 fired for not showing up for work. They were able off for work. I don't know. Wait, wait, are you sure they stole Cadillacs? They did. No, the, Cadillac, the Cadillac dealership had some number, a few hundred Cadillacs on it. They all disappeared. And some of the cops, I don't know the exact number, but it was a, much more than you would guess, turned up with these Cadillacs. And they're not showing up for work. They just drove Cadillacs straight out of New Orleans. And you, you got to wonder if they had every Cadillac had a full tank of gas, because I guess you couldn't get gas there either. So many things happened or reported in the news that didn't really happen. You know, it's just it's just kind of mind blowing how they got away with it. I mean, ten thousand dead, ten thousand dead, fifty thousand dead. dead. You know, there's a thousand dead. <clears throat> My question is: is is the Salt Lake Police Department? Do they share some of these same faults? And the reason I ask is this. There have been several police shootings here in Utah in recent history, which in my opinion have been a little bit suspicious, but these police are cleared. And they're cleared supposedly by independent investigation panels, which I, I think these panels just have cops on them. There was a man who was shot to death in West Valley about a year and a half ago. He had shot apparently in West Valley at a police officer who was trying to pull him over and then escaped. And the police were so outraged, so upset that this guy had taken a shot at a police officer, and from what I understand, they almost put a hit out on this guy. They decided they were going to find this guy and kill him. Well, a few weeks later, after the police had approached everybody he'd ever met, you know, and threatened them or offered them immunity if they were in trouble with the law to find this guy, I think it was the Magna police that found him, Called the We'll be right back after this commercial break. Call it 254 you get started in real estate investing. With your good credit, you can own an investment property with little or no out-of-pocket expense. That same property will appreciate over time, paying you handsomely when you finally sell it. Put some extra cash in your pocket this month. Call me, 635-9599, or log on to my website, myutahproperties.com. 635-9599, myutahproperties.com. Let's get started. Would you like to earn a guaranteed 6 and 7% on your money with no state income tax? Would you like a more secure financial future? Hear the truth about investment. Tune it to Joe Battaglia on the American Advisor Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. right here on KTOX. This is daily to learn the fundamentals of investing so you can protect your family from losing stock and a falling dollar. You will learn what's happening to the economy, how to create a diversified portfolio, and how to prosper in any market environment. Joe also provides valuable information on 401k and other retirement accounts and provides practical advice on protecting the purchasing power of your savings account. Call in and you'll receive a free silver coin. Tune into the American Advisor with your host, Joe Latoya, Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock, right here on KTOX, the voice of Utah. Shame Real shame on Amazon, KTOX. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt. Filling in for Mark Max on tonight. Cell like two five four five eight five five. Four 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 seven zero five eight five five. Logan six seven zero five eight five five. Well, we just had a caller, Steve. Uh, she wanted to know how to get a, re a copy of the recording of the Zal Miller tape. She, I guess, she was very inspired by that, and and so I told her we'll be podcasting all these episodes here in the future. But uh, also, where did you find that? Like that copy? 
Well, you can download that off the internet. If you just get on LimeWire or you get on any of these other file sharing networks, you ought to be able to find us. Like, you ought to be able to get it there. Yeah, that's great. And we don't have a lot of time left on the show, but we have had we've had a scientist from Los Alamos, New Mexico. We had uh, Richard Bushman, the author of the new biography of Joseph Smith, on last week. We've had members of Salt Lake City Council. We hope to have the mayor on this week on the show, Mayor Rocky Anderson. We don't know if we're going to be able to get him or not. We should find out tomorrow morning. And uh, we may even have a federal district court judge on next week. So we've got a lot of interesting interviews that will be online that people will be able to hear. So back to the back police thing. Well, we just we just had a number of police shootings here in Salt Lake. We even had a guy killed last Christmas, almost exactly a year ago, probably to the day today. I think he was killed the day after Christmas in 04. And he was brandishing a knife downtown, and he was shot to get death by the police. And this struck me personally because I knew this guy's family. He was, I knew his ex-wife. He was divorced, and she lived near my parents. And this, this man had a miserable life. He was an alcoholic, and he had some problems. But nevertheless, he was shot to death while brandishing a knife. And I know that our police officers put their lives on the line. But we, the City Weekly did an article just a month ago on another police shooting in West Valley. I don't know what it was up with West Valley, but some undercover cops were parked in front of a of the Laotian man's house, speaking out another house down the street. The Laotian came out to see why they were parked in his front of his house or in his driveway, and when he didn't respond to their orders to leave because he didn't speak English, they shot him to death. He was not armed. He didn't have anything on him. They, lay, they later... Apparently, there was a flashlight that he may have been carrying um, or may not have been carrying. But in any, in any case, he didn't have a gun. And I believe that five of the last six police shootings here in the state of Utah were, were suspects that were not armed with a gun. Uh, uh, they weren't armed or had a knife. I, I, some of them had an unloaded gun in one case. I'm from uh, California, and I just, <clears throat> whenever I saw an officer draw a weapon, the, the situation was very dire, very intense. But I've been in Utah for for a number of years, uh, you know, and they seem to just pull them out whenever they're uncomfortable. Are we, so are we, at what point do, do is the hard on crime conservative mentality, does it go so far that we have so many police on the street that they're looking for things? How about pulling guns on kids with squirt guns? I mean, yellow, blue, and green squirt guns. You know, if they're causing more problems, then then they actually are, are solving out there. And at least with these shootings, I think that that's happening. And I can think of other examples. Um, well, there's a shooting last the year over prosecuting over police things by a guy who shot a guy uh, in, in flight that wasn't even in his jurisdiction. I mean, it's just. Uh, oh, you're talking about the West Valley shooting where they shot the guy, the guy I think in Magna. Yeah, the yeah. Magna police called the, the West Valley police and said we have this suspect that uh, you wanted here in Magna. Come over and get him. So they drove outside their jurisdiction to find this guy, and I think that they shot him 34 times, and um, apparently some of the neighbors who were good, good upstanding people said that uh, you know most of the shots were fired while he was already laying down, and well, we'll never get to the bottom of it just because of the laws that are in place right now. I mean, they, they're immune, and you know, the judges are immune, the police are immune, because you can't sue them, you can't go after them, and so, so there's governmental immunity acts that prevent people from suing judges and prosecutors for malicious prosecution or malicious sentencing, even though the judges or prosecutors in some cases are, mal are maliciously prosecuting or sentencing people. And I have wondered myself, I'm a law school graduate, I have a very conservative political leanings, but I have wondered if this is the one area of government where we don't have proper checks and balances. Everything else, the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, to, to in, in the upper levels, at least with the appeals courts, has a check and balance. But the police department doesn't. You know, if they kill someone, which is a crime that you do life for if you're a civilian, they're just subjected to just the scrutiny of, a, of an independent panel of other police officers. Anyway, it's something to think about. I appreciate our listeners being with us tonight. I'm Steve Lerner. So speak to Mark Maxon. I'll be back tomorrow night. We hope you're all enjoying the holiday and whatever time you still have a left off in the uh, in the Good night, everybody. Please stay tuned for the next show. Mark Maxon is on K Talk. AM 630 KTKK. Come join us at the best Western Cotton Tree Inn in Sandy. Whether it's a romantic getaway in one of our honeymoon suites or a weekend family outing relaxing by a 24 hour pool and hot tub, everyone will be sure to enjoy our full hot breakfast. Filled with eggs, hash browns, Belgian waffles, French toast, food, pastries, and much more. 
They also offer fresh baked cookies, free high speed wireless internet, a fitness center, and shuttle service. They are conveniently located by many shopping centers and numerous restaurants. Call for your reservations today 801 523 8484. That's 801 523 8484. Be sure to mention the KCAS Radio Listener Special Discounted Rate of $69. Best Western's Hot and Tree Inn is located at 106 95 South Adamar Drive in Sandy. 801 523 8484. Call for your reservations today 801 523 8484. That's 801 523 8484. Some doors are good, some are better. The best doors you can get for quality, price, and value are found at Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Price's Guaranteed Doors. For 22 years, Price's Doors has been an industry leader in customer satisfaction. Right now, it's the scratch and dent sale on single and double wide doors. Hurry in for the best selection. Overhead Doors have more options, more styles, more colors, more features, all at the lowest prices. You'll get the best for less right now. Check the website at PricesDoors.com or call 975-7575, 975-7575, serving the Wasatch Front. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Don't miss the once-a-year scratch and dent sale. Overhead Door Company of the Great Basin, a division of Prices Guaranteed Doors. Visit the website or call 975-7575. The prices are the best. Call now and you will be happy and save money. The voice of Utah. The sound of freedom. AM 630 KTKK. CNN Radio. I'm Paul Chambers. The Associated Press is reporting Enron's former chief accounting officer has cut a deal with prosecutors. Ali Belcher reports Richard Causey will now testify against the company's top two executives, Jeffrey Skilling and Ken Lay. What we understand is that of the several charges against uh, Richard Causey, uh, he's agreed to plead guilty to at least one, maybe several more, but to cooperate with the government and, and quite likely testify against Ken Lay and Jeff Skilling. The trial is scheduled to begin next month, but a delay is likely now that the government has a new star witness. Enron imploded four years ago amid disclosures that its accounting system overstated revenues. Thousands of workers lost their jobs, and investors lost billions of dollars. Texas officials are trying to get a handle on how many grass fires are burning. Every time you look at the, at the skyline, you see another column. So every county I know of that fire is going right now. Tracy Weaver is with the Texas Forest Service. Governor Rick Perry has declared a disaster and dispatched National Guard troops to help battle the flames. Forty-nine people have been indicted in a scheme that built thousands of dollars from Red Cross money going to Hurricane.